Livia, hi, how are you? I'm great, how are you? Good. Um, so your movie, The Outside Story, feels like such a love letter to New York, uh, Brooklyn specifically, mm -hmm. and your Long Island, um, you know, in New York slightly uh, in the past, but still feels so entrenched in New York. And your first movie, what was it like to, what was it like to shoot? It was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. I mean, this was my first movie, so it was a great experience. It was also um, because it was filmed in Brooklyn. It was filmed towards the end of the year and it was cold. It was cold. So the best part was like in between scenes, they would have those little like hot, like the little hot pockets. So they would put in your like pockets, they would put them anywhere to keep you warm. But that was really fun. The entire movie was a blast to film. And you get to play the piano. You're a piano virtuoso. And that's actually you playing. And that song, I, I think Bach, a Bach song, whatever it was. It's, yeah, I am I think my character said it was Prokofiev, right. but I I don't know, I don't know how to exactly so. I think I'd, I'd, I'd read that you were, you do play piano, you sing, you dance, play the piano, but at the time you were feeling it a lot more. You were really into it, memorizing the piece. It seems like everything you do when you're acting, I've noticed you really have, you have to feel it. You have to yeah, you, be in yeah, that you really moment. Do. Yeah, you really do have to feel it. My biggest, the biggest thing for me is getting in the character's head because at least when I'm when I'm preparing for a character, if I can think like them, then I've got like 75% of it out of the way. Because if I can think like them, then I can feel like them. So that, when I was preparing for Elena, um, really getting to memorize the piano piece as best as I possibly could um, was a big thing. So there were piano lessons until the actual day where I was able to play certain parts, but the song was so difficult, like my hands were too small to reach the chords. Um, so certain parts, it was just me trying to be accurate. And then other parts, I was like, okay, this part I can do. <laughs> you described your character. You said you're a little more, uh, Duke, you said is more outgoing, but inward at time. And, mm -hmm. and Elena, I mean, very different. Um, maybe doesn't seem to get uh, along too well with her mother. Not quite eye to eye, maybe. Yeah, Elena, it's it's almost kind of sad. It's almost like Duke, Duke's extrovert. She's like an extrovert, but she also enjoys her alone time. But it's almost as if Elena doesn't really have a choice because she doesn't really have a healthy relationship with her mother. You know, her mother is extremely overbearing and she requests a very insane amount of discipline. It's really unrealistic for Elena. Um, but because of that, it's almost trained Elena to be an introvert and she kind of is just used to burying her feelings deep, deep down to the point where she's just lonely. So she doesn't really have anyone to make real friends with. So do you think that within the story, within outside the story, it makes sense for her to be an outsider, to be outside, to want exactly. to a friend? Um, the outside, her outside is almost like her escape because she knows that she can't escape her mother per se, but she knows that it can give her a break because since she's so, since she's so closed off, it's almost like the only person that will really ever get her is herself. So when she's alone, it's like, that's where she's the most comfortable. So Brian Tyree Henry, who plays Charles in this movie, another one of my quarantine watches, not making this up after Better Things, which I devoured, mm -hmm. I went, straight to Atlanta, which also nice. I had seen. And I felt really, really um, surprised because again, another show that I quite, quite enjoyed and, you know, like a, like a blind spot. Like, why haven't I been watching this sooner? <laughs> and I think you had said that you had met Brian Tyree Henry at an Emmys party. And he said <laughs> that you, one day maybe you'll work together. And the first day on set, he said, I remember, and there it that's, was. Yeah, that's actually exactly what happened. We were briefly introduced. We, we just started talking a little bit. And then he just said, no, we got to work together one day. No, we're going to work together one day. And I was like, all right, yeah. I mean, listen, I'm up for that. That sounds like fun. And then on the first day of filming, he went, I knew it. what I tell you? <laughs> so, it was, so it was a lot of fun. It just feels like a, like a real home, like a slice of life movie, but also really powerful. What do, yeah. you, what do you like about projects like this? Yeah, what I love about it is it's such a simple thing. Like it's happened to everyone. Everyone's at one point gotten locked out of, you know, whether it be their room, their house, 
they've always, they know the feeling of absolute no, when you get locked out and you can't get back in, but it's so much worse for Charles because that's like his safe space. That's the world. His entire world is inside his apartment and he does everything he possibly can to stay inside. So he's completely like out of his comfort zone when he's, you know, trying to, when he's interacting with people that usually would never meet, never want to meet, but he's, it's almost like he's discovering a whole new world. So you know what it's like to go there as an actor and, you know, Better Things feels like every single scene kind of hangs on a bit, a beat longer than it would be expected to. And you really feel it when you're watching, or at least I do. You know, I can, I can think of specific episodes and scenes that, that hit me, but I'm curious for you. And they probably, you know, when you're getting a script, for example, for it, or you're just running through it in your head, what have been some of those moments on the show where you felt, okay, I'm really gonna do this. I'm really gonna go there. I know when, um, the whenever I get a script, especially for the show, by the way, whenever I do get the script, there's usually like previous weeks of, did the script, did, did the script come in yet? No, the script did not come in. Okay, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. I, but then when I finally do get it, like, okay, give me, give me, give me. And I'm like, okay, what happens? And that's usually when I go, I tear through all the scripts. I love them. Um, usually the first thing that I try to do is I try to get into the character's head. And then once I've done that, sometimes I try to, imagine what the scene's going to be like and one of two things will happen it'll either be exactly as I imagined it or it'll be completely different and I'll be like oh that makes way more sense that makes complete more that makes way way more sense um but I know that the scenes where Duke sees her grandpa that was I loved that because how she felt she wasn't trying to show and there was scenes where um Duke sees a sad lady in season two, um, when she sees them, she doesn't try to show that she's like scared. Like she's not screaming and she's not like going insane, but she feels close and connected to her grandfather. So I really loved those scenes because it showed their dynamic. One of the key episodes for me for the past season, I found it was a season four was DNA, where it was, there was a bit of a screaming match going on between Max and Sam and it's just, <laughs> I don't know, something about that one. Anytime you're sort of with, together in that house, the house is such a character as well. It must be incredible, first of all, to shoot in that house. Mm -hmm. But, you know, how does it feel when you're, when you're playing scenes or maybe even on the periphery? But what your show does so well is it includes the characters that aren't necessarily front and center or it, they interact too. What's it like to do big set pieces or scenes like that? Yeah, what I love about those type of scenes and what you mentioned before, characters kind of like drift like through the show is it's like life. Like life isn't, and one thing that a lot of questions that we get asked is like, when are you guys gonna go back to that? And it's like, you, we don't really have to because that's life. Not everything's gonna be, you know, tied in a nice little neat ribbon and a bow and like that's finished now, like that's not life. So that's why I feel like, that's what I feel like this show does best is it's raw, it's real and it's relatable. What do you like most about this as your first movie? I, I mean, I have to go back to what I said before. I love how it's such a simple thing, like getting locked out of your apartment, but how it's portrayed as this huge, like trans, transformational journey for Charles, because it's almost showing you um, in his eyes how big a deal this is for him, because he is not in his element at all. He is completely lost and he's experiencing all these new things. So that's, I'd say, have to be one of my favorite things. So with the series and the movie, you seem to really feed off of the energy of your scene partners and give it back to them. Who have been some of your favorites to work with and what do you feel like you're sort of, you know, what energy do you feel like is best when it's thrown at you and you're, you're giving it back? I mean, I gotta, I gotta, they're all so different because you have, I know Celia, who's incredible, she's always, she's always very spontaneous. So if there's, as I mentioned before, if there's a part that Duke's supposed to be shocked, there was, there was actually a scene where Duke's supposed to be shocked because she whispers something in her ear. And I don't know if you guys end up hearing what she says, but like, I remember she said something so shocking. It literally made my mouth drop. 
That was my real reaction. Pamela is very similar. She's usually spontaneous a lot of the times, but because she's also the director and she has the idea of what she wants in the scene, it's really cool because she can almost like guide you through the scene on, she can like give you the energy that she wants in the scene, which is really cool. And Hannah and Mikey as well, they're amazing when it comes to that. You were saying about uh, Duke and fall falling into the character. How do you feel like she's different than you or the same as you? Um, I feel like Duke, I feel, I feel like the similarities, um, that I'm, I noticed in the very beginning is we're both innocent ish. However, I, I would, I would say, I will say that Duke, as she grows up, she may fall into the pattern of, you know, the, the people call it like the teenage years or whatever that is, but people, um, she is growing up and she is beginning to grow up. I know that one of the differences that I used to find right away is her clothes. We were two, we were very different with our wardrobe. Although I do sometimes I'll be like, I get to wear this today. This is really cool. Wait, this is really cool. So I, I gotta appreciate the wardrobe as well. Um, yeah, that's what I would say. Do you think that Duke is the favorite? And I think Duke knows it. Do I think Duke, I think Duke, I think Duke knows that she's the easiest when it comes to her mother because Duke sometimes feels the need to play like the protector of her mom when her older sisters are being mean, like being bratty. But because of that, I think she kind of sees that her mom likes when she does that. So I think sometimes if she wanted to, I feel like she could try and take advantage of that. So your movie, your show, as I said, hit me in the feels very much affected by the work that you're doing. How about yourself? What have you enjoyed watching? Um, I mean, I've enjoyed watching, my all-time favorite show, if that's what you're asking, is Lost, the show yeah. Lost. I love that show so much. Um, I also love Once Upon a Time. I love that show. I went right through that. I love the whole um, fairy tale with a twist. I love that. Um, it's similar to a book series that I love called The School for Good and Evil. It's kind of like the same vibe as Once Upon a Time. It might be hard to actualize one, but what would be sort of a dream project or a dream role or something you haven't had a chance to do yet that you'd like to? Honest, dream role? I mean, I would honestly love to do any role where I can make, where I can do what you said, like make people feel something, any role like that. If we're talking like dream role, maybe like a uh, Doctor, I love Doctor Who. I know I'm gonna sound like a nerd when I say that, but I love Doctor Who. And um, probably, it's probably gonna sound cliche playing a superhero. That's just so cool. I just feel like it's just cool playing a superhero. <laughs> so it's great that you get to play the piano in this movie. And I've seen you sing and the, da oh, the dance scene in the, ep the end of episode of season two at the uh, last episode, the tilted one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it was about that because I felt that one so deeply as well too. Well, the big, doing it. Yeah, when, the you, big, were, when the, you were performing the dance, and uh, I guess also the reaction, Max's reaction to the dance, because it was so such a surprise. Do you think that's something that you'd like to do upcoming? That you would like to incorporate more singing, dancing, and um, music as well? Yeah, I mean, I love music. I love singing and I love dancing, and I'd absolutely love to do that in the future. Um, but I know for specifically the tilted Max, Max's reaction, that was real. That was, Mikey had no clue any of that was going to happen. And we had done rehearsals for that for pretty much the entire, like two months. So a majority of the time that we were filming and because we had to try and keep it as much as of, as much as a secret as we possibly could, we had to come up with like a code word just in case someone was like this close to accidentally saying something that would make her go, wait, what? And so we decided because it's called Tilted, we'd be like, hey, sit up straighter, like your back, you're gonna hurt your back, like sit straighter. And I remember one of the times me, uh, Mikey and Hannah, we were, at, we were have a sleepover and Hannah said, yeah, I think I pulled something that dance rehearsal. And I was like, hmm, uh, Hannah, you're back. Um, sit like your your back. She's like, oh no, that was a dream. That was a dream that I had. Never mind. That's not what happened. <laughs> but we'll, we're like one close call. But that's what we had to do. So I just want to say, first of all, such a pleasure to finally speak with you. Such a fan of all the work you're you've done and you, that you will you so do. Much. And I can't wait for everyone to see this movie for upcoming seasons of Better Things and wherever you go from here. I think you're. 
doing incredible work. So thank you. Thank you so much.